Greetings from the Catholic Parish of Bundaberg, trusting you are safe and in good spirits. Today we continue with getting to know the people of our parish just that little bit better, a bit of fun and information. And today we have the privilege of having one of our very own Sisters of Mercy, Sister Mary Della, a person of great faith and a person of spirit. And I just better warn you, look out, because that spirit will go straight through the camera. Great to have you, Sister. Thank you, Father Peter. And today you are going to read us a little gospel of your choice. Yes. Would you like to do so now, please? I will. I've chosen the gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 20. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I shall ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world can never receive, since it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he is with you, he is in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come back to you. In a short time the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day, you will understand that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Mary, that's a very powerful and very, I find, very comforting reading. The Spirit is in us. Yes. As Jesus and the Father are one, so are we. It's beautiful. Yeah. Why that one? Well, it's a real Trinitarian text and the relationship between Jesus and the Father is highlighted and we're drawn into it. We're drawn in to share in that light. Mm. But then Jesus goes further. I shall ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. So the advocate will continue Jesus' work in his followers and Jesus was well aware of the difficulties his followers would confront in his absence. So he says to each of his disciples and to each one of us, I will not leave you orphaned. I'm still here with you in a different way. You will be strengthened by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus tells us the Holy Spirit will teach us all truth. So. The Holy Spirit wants to purify us, transform us, so that we will be advocates for others and that we will reach out to each other with uh, his love and compassion. Thanks, Mary. Thanks for those beautiful understandings. They're very, very deep. You. Now, you, have, you come from a family of faith. That's clear. Would you just like to tell us your story from its beginnings? Okay, Peter. The uh, I was born in Mackay. I have two older brothers and a younger sister, Ivy. Mm -hmm. uh, the boys went to Andergrove State School. Uh, I was at Andergrove State School for one year, after which we moved to South Mackay area where Dad bought a farm. And so I went to the primary school of St Mary's and then later to St Patrick's High School. And then I worked for the Civil Aviation Department at the airport in Mackay. I really enjoyed my work there. I was actually the only female there. There were 20 male employees. And after a while, I could recognize their footsteps coming up the steps and going past my office or into the office, whether it be the groundsman, the George, the fireman, or the, or the air traffic control engineer, whoever. So it was, it was a, a good time. So these are some of the stories that when we come across Sisters of Mercy or Sisters of any order, we sometimes these days don't think you are a real person <laughs> and, and we sometimes lose that contact. Now, I had the good fortune of being taught by Mercy Sisters yes. in Victoria and you know, beautiful people. And so can you just tell us a little bit of your faith background and why, why entering the religious order? Well, faith background, <clears throat> Mum had great faith. She loved her God. She loved her church. She loved her family. 
and both mum and dad taught us respect and love for one another uh, and to work diligently at whatever task we were set. Um, and um, the sisters too, I found the sisters at St Mary's were uh, very, they taught, becoming uh, aware of the lives of the saints had an impact on me, both from home and at the school. The sisters would have all these lives of the saints and would encourage us to read about them, particularly when we were preparing for confirmation. And I can still remember my mother telling me the story of Saint Ma of Maria Goretti when she was canonized in 1950. So, oh, and also we prayed the family rosary and we drove off to mass as a family. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I remember being taught by the Sisters Mercy and they knew well ahead of their time that us boys who had been kicking a football around at lunchtime wouldn't be much good for mathematics or whatever else after. <laughs> so that's when they taught us those saints that you're, you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Beautiful. It, it's, um, I think it's important for our young ones yeah. to hear about the lives of these saints. Okay. Mm. So why Sisters of Mercy? What happened there? Well, initially... The thought of becoming a sister started when I was about 10 and I think some of the sisters from St Mary's would have influenced me there. But as I grew older I pushed that thought to the background. And um, I enjoyed many activities including sport, uh, dancing, meeting up with friends and I did have a special male friend. Then we had a mission at St Mary's Church, given by two Redemptorists. I remember Father Goss. And this night, whatever else he talked about, he spoke about responding to the call to religious life. And I can remember, I can even remember where I was sitting in that church and I was held spellbound. And the thought would not go away, it was, it was full on. And it was not an easy time for me trying to discern whether or not to respond to this invitation. However, I finally applied to the Sister of, Sisters of Mercy and Peter, you asked me about why the Sisters of Mercy. Well, in those days, they were practically the only order I knew about. So, and I, I knew the Sisters of Mercy. So I applied to the Sisters of Mercy in Rockhampton thinking to myself, well, at least I'll give it a go. They'll probably send me home and that will be that. And I honestly thought that would happen. I was still working and uh, I remember the day cycling home from the airport and in the opposite direction this car was slowing down and it was dear Father McAllister, God bless him, and he called out to me, Mary, are you thinking you're getting married soon? I didn't know whether to laugh or to cry. <laughs> Father, I'm off to St. Anne's novitiate soon. I may return. <laughs> and he, his mouth was wide open. He just stared at me in amazement. Mum and Dad arranged for us to have a family photo taken before I entered uh, religious life. And as it turned out, the sisters didn't send me home. And as the years went by, and even now, I thank God for being so patient with me in my initial resistance and for giving me that um, inner certitude that I am where I'm meant to be. In the Navishi, I trained with a, a group of lovely young women and we lived in an era when our reception day, that is when we were being received as sisters, we dressed as brides, signifying that we were brides of Christ. This event took place in the cathedral in Rockhampton and the, I'm glad coronavirus wasn't around, that the cathedral was chock-a-block, <laughs> was filled. Eight of us were from, uh, initially there were eight of us and four of us were from Mackay. And sometime later, uh, Bishop Rush came to the novitiate and the eight of us, all in our white habits and our cross with the the ebony cross, had our photo taken with um, Bishop Rush. Over the years I've taught in many schools but I remember one in particular 
Marion in Mackay where I had a lovely group of country uh, children in grade seven. Um, it was so hard to keep the boys uh, quiet when there was a snake around. A few times we had a snake, we were surrounded by cane fields and they would all vie with each other who was going to get that snake. I think nowadays we'd be in a bit of trouble, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure they killed a few snakes. Um, and um, oh, I mentioned the cross. We had an ebony cross with uh, ivory in the insert. Now we have this simpler cross, but it, it still picks up the um, symbol of the original. And all Sisters of Mercy throughout the world wear this cross as a sign of our vowed commitment. And we are we are challenged about you know about we think of the death and resurrection of Jesus in God's plan of redemption, and God's great mercy. Okay, now let's just go back a little bit. So you, you enter. How long is it? So if to, to before you, when you started to, before you actually were called Sister Mary. How long did it take? And do you have any stories about what you actually do? when you're in the convent? When I was in the con, yes, well, actually, uh, my first name was Sister Virginia. Okay. And um, one of the pupils from uh, from Holy Spirit still calls me Sister, Sister Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what did we do in the, so in the see, what, yet? what was life like? What, what did you actually do? Oh, yes, we, we definitely lived by routine. We yeah. got up early in the morning. That was a bit of a challenge. But um, when I talk about my workplace, the men there gave me a, an alarm clock <laughs> when I went to enter. They probably thought I'd be getting up early in the morning. But we had a beautiful novice mistress. Her name was Mother Patrick. And she was really, she taught us um, deep spirituality. And, you know, we, we learned how to pray, pray the office together. And we had mass. And uh, there was a lot of uh, spiritual upbuilding during that time. There were also our uh, times of, uh, we had ups and downs like like uh, all young women. But uh, and then two of us would have to get up early in the morning once a week to do the washing. And the others were at prayer, but we'd always take turn about. And uh, when we had our meals, one would s sit at the head of the table to read uh, a spiritual book or a, a life of the saint while we all ate in silence. And there were times of recreation, of course, when we'd all um, be um, together laughing and doing some uh, sewing and, and um, different things like that. And also Mother Patrick got us to do um, different concerts, like I think we ended up doing The Sound of Music once. <laughs> Imagine that one. So we did, you know, it was, it was very varied. Yeah. And I still remember we used to walk in the evening, on, in the cool of the evening, we'd walk in front of St. Anne's Novitiate praying the rosary. Yeah. And that was good too. Yes. Mm. So a lot of good young ladies, a lot of good women with you. Yes. Where did the Holy Spirit come in? You have a very profound, deep, charismatic approach to life. Well, will I talk about, am I moving on to the charismatic? Yes, if you like, yes. Well, my first experience of the charismatic uh, prayer came in the 70s. The sisters would travel from Rockhampton to Brisbane for the vacation school at the Queensland University. And this particular year, a number of us attended Barden Catholic Church. And um, there was Father Vince Hobbs, with a few other people leading in prayer. And the people were really praying with such joy and such spontaneity, uh, it really touched me. And then they prayed in tongues and I had never heard praying in tongues before. I thought how melodious it sounded. And this big group of people all praying in tongues and then suddenly it just stopped. And they, it, that was the nature of this praying in tongues. And, um, I found it very powerful and prayerful, and it was like as though the Holy Spirit gave me a new, revela a new revelation, a new awareness of just how close and personal Jesus is to each one of us. Which just came through in that gospel, didn't it? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And um, 
later I had the opportunity to do a Life in the Spirit seminar. People might wonder what a Life in the Spirit seminar is. Well, it has really two objectives, that renewing and igniting the power of the Spirit which we all received at baptism and confirmation, and promoting and deepening uh, an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And a number of us have started the charismatic uh, prayer here in, on uh, October 2016. But I'm well aware that it's been going on here for, for many years. Um, and so what day do we, what day do you have the, the prayer to? Yes, uh, we opened it up for the first time in February 2017. We meet in Novikovsky Hall every first and third Tuesdays of each month. We start at 7 p.m. and it goes for about an hour, after which we can have a cuppa or prayer. Um, and what happens in that hour? We have a lot of praise. It's like we, for we forget ourselves. We are concentrating on the Lord. We're praising the Lord. And, um, you know, people don't have to pray in tongues, but they can pray in whatever way, they, any language they want to. Yeah. Um, and we have readings from Scripture. And uh, at times it's just amazing how a person will, will pick a scripture that is just what the, the speaker had in mind. We'll have some teaching and um, the hour goes very quickly. Oh, we have intercessions where people write their in, all the intercessions and then we, um, pray, we pray, to the, we offer those up to the Lord. And um, as I said, the hour goes very quickly. It's a very life-giving prayer time, it's isn't it? A very life-giving yeah. prayer, and where it's it's very joyful and um, very spontaneous, and the Lord touches many hearts. He's mm. you know His Spirit really touches our hearts. So, for those persons in today's troubled times, we have many troubles these days, who are seeking and searching for truth and prayer and all of those sorts of things, the charismatic group would be a good one for them. Yes, come and see. we would love you to come and see and we would welcome you with open arms. So you are most welcome. The first and third Tuesdays of every month starting at 7 p.m. Beautiful. Now that spirit working in your heart and you were telling me earlier about your teaching career. Could you just tell us a couple of those stories, the numbers of schools and where? Yes, I won't bore you with... Um, a list of all the different schools to which I was assigned. But in my first 22 years of teaching, I was asked to go to 16 different schools. Uh, my friend said, oh, Mary, you must either be very difficult to get on with in community or you must be pretty adaptable. <laughs> so we'll take the second. <laughs> I also had the opportunity to um, undertake study and spirituality courses for which I am most grateful and a time of clinical pastoral education at the Mercy Hospital in East Melbourne prepared me for chaplaincy, pastoral care work in hospitals, and which is very dear to my heart and which I continue to do. Um, ten, 10 years ago, after my mum died, I volunteered to go to Papua New Guinea. Yeah, I was hoping you'd tell that one. <laughs> where Sister Kay, uh, Sister Kay, a Mercy sister, sister from West Australia, carried, she ran a Mercy uh, Education Centre for uh, young women from poor families who couldn't afford to send them to college. My lessons with the girls varied. I had religion, religion classes, uh, singing classes, and um, craft work focusing on making beautiful cards. And when I returned to Australia, I was so pleased Kay told me that the girls were still making and perfecting those cards and they were selling them at the market and that really pleased me. I also taught piano lessons. Now that didn't go too well. We had two keyboards in the convent but the girls didn't seem to pick up um, piano lessons. I think they were more spontaneous and a bit yeah. of dancing. Yeah, bit of they yeah. did their own thing. And sewing classes, we also had an extra sewing machine and I said to Sister Kay, oh, it'd be lovely for the girls to learn how to use a sewing machine. So they, um, they all, they picked up very quickly. Each girl had a turn at sewing. 
and one night Sister Kay came back complaining to me saying, the girls in the classroom are taking turns sewing, using the sewing machine instead of getting on with their homework. She taught the <laughs> academic subjects. Yeah. Roy and Joan Smith, who spent a time in Papua New Guinea, did wonderful work there and continued to do wonderful work when they came home. They uh, knew I was going and they sent up a package of beautiful cotton materials. And that package was there when I arrived. And so I encouraged the girls to choose whatever materials she liked. And I helped each girl to make a garment for herself. And that was lovely. And you um, got a photograph of these girls. Yes. The garments that they yes, sewed had themselves. The, the garment that, that they sewed themselves on that sewing machine. So you got these stunning looking girls from Papua New Guinea. Yes. In their own clothes that they made themselves. Yes. Wow, that's powerful. And we, we, I mean, we had a, a fashion parade in the classroom, yeah. which was lovely. Yeah. Um, something, oh yes, I was going to say, uh, I learned a lot from those young women. Those girls were so resilient in the face of any adversity. I was yeah. there when their water pump broke down, yeah. their electricity was gone for weeks. And I said something to them. They said, oh, that's all right, sister. Well, they would accept whatever circumstance they found themselves in. And they, they were hardworking students, and I was also touched by their deep faith. Mm. Yes. So would you have a message to people today? Doesn't have, doesn't have to be the young ones, anyone, about being spirit-filled. You clearly are. What do you have that you'd like to share with them? Your words humble me, Father Peter, um, but you know, I think the Spirit is available to everyone. Mm. We've only to ask. Didn't the, didn't, there's a, a gospel passage that says, will not the Father give you the, you know, if you give your sons this, will not the Father give you the Holy Spirit? All we have to do is ask. And I think, I think uh, surrendering our, our lives to the Lord is, is uh, part of that being filled with the Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, come. But the Lord asks us to, well, He, he invites us. Do you, do you trust me enough to surrender your life to me that I will look after you? Whatever I call you to do, I will give you the strength. And, um, and of course I do uh, pray to Mother Mary. Yeah. I think Mother Mary was so filled with the Spirit and she was always, always answering the Spirit. So. Dear Mother Mary, help me to continue to answer the Spirit's call. And the Spirit's call is for everyone, young and old. You're all invited. Yeah. So have you got a spirit prayer that you'd like to pray? Well, I do love that song, Veni Sancte Spiritus, and the one that everyone knows, and which I'm sure everyone knows. Yeah. Come Holy Spirit, fill, fill the, the hearts, hearts of, of the your faithful, faithful and, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send, send forth your spirit, spirit and, and they shall be created. created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Amen. Yeah, that's one of my favourite prayers, that one. Oh, yes. Yes, the personal touch for us is that it was um, my favourite prayer and went I, presiding at my younger brother's funeral in Melbourne. That's the one that he had on the back of the card. Beautiful. Yeah, it means a lot to me. So thank you, Mary. Thank you. And at a time when we still are locked down a little bit, and although it is being released a little bit at this time of the virus, there's a special little prayer that we'd like to say. Would you like to pray that one for us? Yes. Compassionate and loving Father, in the face of confusion and concern, impart to us the calm of your presence. In you, allow us to find hope and healing. Be with those who serve the sick and give them your caring hands. Be with those who lead and give them your spirit of wisdom. Be with those who have fallen ill and give them your comforting heart. Wrap your arms around our world and hold us in your love. Allow us at this time of trial to then serve as instruments of that love to all we meet. We ask this in your name, Amen. Amen. So thank you, Mary. And thank you. 
that beautiful prayer I think sums up a lot of your ministry as well with the great visitations that you do and you take us priests along with you sometimes yes. wherever we wherever you travel and touching people's hearts and when I hear that words of the prayer then I could hear the spirit working through you into their hearts as well so thank you very much for being with us today thank you Peter praise the Lord so thank you also for being with us today join us again next week for another episode of church chat keep in touch stay well and be gentle with each other 